hope it goes now. Hi, fellow Ambazonians, greetings. Of course, I'll be very brief. I'm sorry for the interruption with my internet connection. Um, it suddenly went abrupt um, off. So um, I'll be very brief with what I'm saying today because, of course, uh, this is uh, the Ambazonia Communications uh, uh, video. And so we're expecting that this video will be downloaded, edited, and put on WhatsApp as a whole. So, of course, uh, greetings, my fellow Ambazonians. Uh, we're here to chart a way forward. And I believe that uh, we've, in the past seven days or so, witnessed a series of tectonic shifts. We've witnessed uh, the apologies from Mark Barretta and uh, Eric Tato, as well as a key number of activists who want unity, including myself. We've witnessed that we cannot move forward, especially as our people are dying, if we don't come together as one. And we pressure our own leaders to sit together in a room to find out a solution to our problems. I am very happy and particularly pleased with Mark Barretta because, of course, as influential as he is with the IG, and also Eric Tato, as influential as he is with the IG, They've suddenly discovered that policies, especially failed policies, would not take us anywhere. It will lead our people to their graves and it would not take us to Boya. We've realized that within the past two years, we've been singing and singing and singing about the issue of liberation first before governance second. But we thank God everyone is opening their eyes to seeing that we have to liberate ourselves from La Republic first before we can roll out any form of governance or any structure of governance. It is not to say the IG is weak. It is not to say the IG has failed. It is not to say any form of governance, including the AGC itself, has failed. No, it is to say we have to liberate ourselves first before we put together a governance structure that will be binding, inclusive, and cohesive. It is to say we have to roll out a structure after we liberate ourselves where our citizens can participate in a voting process that will be transparent, free, and fair for all. It is to say our leaders have tested some kind of form of governance, but it wasn't the right time for us to roll out such a structure especially when La Republic du Cameroon is already a structure well-coordinated and financed to kill us and our women, our children in particular. At least our leaders have tried and tested what it, what it means governance. At least Sako himself has tested what it means to govern a people who are spread across the world and none of them or none of his targets, his immediate targets, are in Ambazonia itself. At least, it is not to say uh, Sisiku Ayoktabe failed in his form of governance, no. At least, we tested a leader that was genuine, and but the problem was, it wasn't the right time for us to have that form of a government. At this point of the struggle, we've realized one thing. La Republique du Cameroon has gripped us, and we cannot move from its claws. We have to liberate ourselves first before we go into any form of a governance second. When God chose or Yahweh chose uh, Moses to liberate the people of Israel, of Israel in Egypt, he gave him an assistant called Aaron. He was a great communications guy fluent. Moses himself was a stammerer. Moses doubted the leadership capabilities bestowed on him to liberate the people of Israel in Egypt. At some point, Moses used a crude method with his staff, his magical staff, and he also killed someone just to liberate his people. Those are the kinds of rebels we need in a revolution. And those are the kinds of people we need at this moment. It is not to say Moses, who did not see the promised land himself, who was exported to the promised land by his brother, or by his brothers, Joshua and Caleb. It is not to say Moses who was not a leader. It is to say God designed Moses to liberate the people and not to govern the people. God has designed several leaders in this struggle to liberate us. It is time we open our eyes to see those leaders. I'm speaking here particularly about Dr. Ebenezer Akwanga and Dr. Ayabacho Lucas. These are people whom several years back, without go for me and without any schemes, any financial money-making scheme, these are people who genuinely designed a structure to cripple La, La Republic du Cameroon when most of us were unionists and federalists. 
Let us give them a chance. These are people who were incarcerated in La Republic du Cameroon's Kondengi prison. Let us give them a chance. These are people who broke the Mongo bridge because they wanted to liberate a people who did not see the need of liberation. Let us still give them a chance. All of them are below the age of, one, of, of 50, and we still see them as young, capable, and agile to cripple La Republic du Cameroon. Let us give them a chance. It is not to say Sako cannot govern our people, but at least he can give relevant advice as he always gave. He can still give us the advice, give the liberation fighters, the rebels, an advice that would lead us to a quicker victory. And there, if he, can wa if he wants to run for a president, he can still take over leadership. At this moment, we have one revolution. And if we fail, we will never, ever get back to our rails. Our revolution is very critical and dire because our people have died and are being massacred on a daily basis. We don't have the means, we don't have the capabilities, but I believe that if we put together Dr. Akwanga Ebenezer and Dr. Ayabacho Lucas in a room and lock them up, there would be a solution. I strongly believe that these two people have a solution and a military and a rebellious solution to freeing us in Ambazonia. I strongly believe that these two people can free us and later give us our citizenship where we can vote any president in any free, fair, transparent election. I strongly believe this is the moment for us to try an experiment. An experiment we've never tried within the last three years. I strongly believe that we can give these people a chance to free us and we can hold them accountable because they claim and they have been designated as rebels. I believe so much in rebellion at this critical stage of the struggle because La Republique du Cameroon is designing one architect to finish us within the immediate or the shortest period of time. The architect of destruction, Mr. Paul Bia Bartolomeo Bimvondo, who has been installed in power again for the next seven years. Don't expect Mr. Bia to be different from what he was two or three years ago. We are still dealing with the same enemy, and we have people who have dealt with the same enemy, Akwanga Ebenezer and Dr. Ayabacho Lucas. These are people who have the experience, the experience of dealing with that enemy, even when most of us were siding and eating and dining with the enemy. Let us give them a chance for once and close our eyes. It is great for Mark Barata to apologize in some kind of a post where he clearly stated, we have been failing because of some kind of a government. Now it is time for us to test what it means in liberation. It is time for us to liberate ourselves first before we govern ourselves next. That is the kind of leadership I see in Mark, which must be applauded and which all of us must hail him for his humility towards that approach. That is the same approach we've been preaching for the last two, three years, but no one ever listened. We have videos, we have audios, and we have texts on our pages saying we have to govern after we liberate. There is no way you can liberate a people who are under captivity by governing them. You must first of all free them, clean them up, make them citizens, then govern them. La Republique du Cameroon is already governing our citizens in captivity. So what do we need to do? We have to make the system completely ungovernable. We cannot make a system completely ungovernable by trying to govern or overgovern that particular system. We have to destroy, and destruction means liberation. We have to destroy those bars, those chains, those shackles, and that means liberation. And we need those people with the right skill sets and tools to destroy this, those shackles. And this is exactly where I'm coming from. At this point, let us not be distracted by what is happening in Boston as a Boston conference. Let us not be distracted by what is happening among federalists. If we are distracted, it means that we are losing our focus and we are looking at objects that don't matter. Everyone is free to liberate our own citizens from every angle of the world. We cannot stop people from liberating or organizing themselves or from exercising their own right to peaceful assembly and some kind of holding their meetings and organizations. 
Allow those who want to run organizations in Boston and the rest to run whatever they want to run. That does not affect us. If it affects you, then you can move there and stop them. But that will be sapping the energy for nothing. What we have to focus on is bringing together these two people, whom many have rumored that they are not talking to each other, Akwanga Ebenezer and Dr. Cho Ayaba Lucas. These are great friends that were pulled apart by some kind of a political structure. These are great friends that knew nothing related to governance when they were fighting against Mr. Paul Bia Bartolomeo being Vonda. These are people who knew nothing about any form of any governance when they sacrificed their lives to, broke down the, to break the Mongol bridge and also to liberate uh, Dr. Ebenezer Akwanga from the shackles or from his shackles in Kondengi prison. We must still give them that chance and that free atmosphere to exercise the liberation rights. These are people whom long before now were already labeled as rebels and were published in every magazine we know of. Let us give them the chance. I strongly believe at this stage of the struggle, we should call everyone to pressure for these two leaders to sit together and we will have a binding, cohesive, and an inclusive solution towards our plights. I strongly believe that we can still give Sako his chance to becoming a president if he wants to become a president after we liberate ourselves within the shortest period of time. I strongly believe we can still give anyone who wants to become a president his or her chance of becoming a president after we must have liberated ourselves within the shortest period of time. I strongly believe we can put together a best form of governance that would be inclusive, fair, honest, that would have every form of democratic principle, including the rule of law. I strongly believe we can do that, not now, but after we must have liberated ourselves from La Republic to Cameroon. I strongly believe you and I watching us are the best rebel fighters, the best fighters who can fight and defeat La Republic within two weeks. I strongly believe that if we take this war into La Republic du Cameroon, we will cripple La Republic du Cameroon within the shortest period of time. Fellow Ambazonians, please let us bend our heads down. Ignore everything about politics. We've tested all those political governments. We've been into those political governmental laboratories, but no experiment has yielded any result. We've tested all forms of lawsuits. We've tested all forms of diplomatic channels. None of them have yielded any results. It is time for us to pick up the guns and give leaders, rebels, or what you call warlords, for example, give them a chance. Let us see if they can do anything really concrete and binding for us and for our liberation. I also strongly believe that we can support our own leaders. It is not by dividing Sako and Ayaba or dividing Ayaba and uh, Kwanga that will give us the solution. No, we can put everyone together, put them in a room and let those two rebels come out as the leaders who can take us to the promised land. They may not be the ones to take us into that promised land, but they would be the ones to free us from La Republic du Cameroon. And whoever wants to take us into Ambazonia, great. At this moment, we have been held tight, as Chris uh, Anu would say, they don't hold we for Wakanas. We've been held tight and there is no way we can move. Only Banso at the moment is really strong and holding the mantle. Why don't we give ourselves a chance to see how we can direct all our efforts, our finances, our manpower, our human resources towards a particular channel of, of, of self-defense? Why do we think we have to appoint governors when there is no need for that, when our people are still in shackles? Why do you think we have to appoint ambassadors when our people are still in shackles? Why do we think we have to appoint some form of a councillor or local government when our people are still in shackles? Why do we think we have to institute some kind of a tax reform system when our people are still looking for where to run and hide? When our people have nowhere to hide? How can the people in shackles work to pay taxes? How can people who are fleeing from conflict still pay taxes? The governance structure, we've already made the system completely ungovernable. 
So being ungovernable, it means we cannot and we are not able to pay taxes to that particular system or even any system we want to pay taxes to. So at this stage of the struggle, let us reflect. It is not by rushing, because if we rush it, we shall crush it. It is by taking it gently, as Ayeba Cho Lucas, as Ayeba Cho Lucas and Dr. Ebenezer Akwanga did several years ago. They took it gently without forming any form of government. They did what they call, they had what they call the ADF, the Ambazonian Defense Forces, and the SOCADEF, the Southern Cameroon's Defense Forces. They see themselves as the commanders in chief of the Ambazonia and the, so and the Southern Cameroon's Defense Forces. And those are the kinds of liberation fighters we need. And these are not people who are uneducated. These are not people who are illiterate. These are people who are damn intelligent. These are people with PhD degrees. These are people with at least a master's degree on all from Western universities. I don't believe they are fools and I don't believe these people who have families and kids can lead us to the abyss. Can we give them a chance for once? I strongly believe we all, if we rally our forces, keeping aside our individual grievances, keeping aside Sako wants to become president by all costs, or Chris wants to become this at all costs, let's keep all of those aside. Keep those things aside. They don't matter at this moment. Being a president will not stop La Republic du Cameroon from killing our citizens. But being a rebel will stop La Republic du Cameroon from killing our citizens. Being an ambassador would never, ever stop La Republic du Cameroon from killing our citizens. But being a rebel will stop La Republic du Cameroon from killing our citizens. Being some kind of a local government or local governor would not stop La Republic from killing our citizens. But being a rebel, armed rebel, will stop La Republic from killing our citizens. These are things we have to open our eyes to, and these are the bitter realities we have to face within now and the days to come. Fellow Ambalanders, it is a very simple strategy, void of any political experimentation, void of any governmental experimentation. It is a simple strategy we have to implement if we think we have to get Ambazonia within the shortest period of time. We've always said, of course, let Sako and others who want to govern clear the way. They should not clear the way because we want to push them aside. They should give the path for liberation fighters to take over and give us this particular lead towards Ambazonia. Then Sako and others can come into the frame. That is simple. And that is exactly what we want to do. We've not said we should stop government abroad. We've said we should establish a government back home. And so anyone who wants to govern would go back home and set up a presidency after these two leaders must have liberated us. I cannot liberate you. I don't have the power and that competence to liberate you. But I can contribute towards our liberation. You cannot liberate me. You don't have the power and competence to liberate me. But I think you can jointly, we can jointly contribute towards the liberation of Ambazonia. The struggle is bigger than any individual. And the struggle is very, very big than any governmental structure. When we use words like government and when we use words like ambassadors, sometimes I laugh. We don't have a government. We are only experimenting a government. If for those who have done degrees or master's degrees in governance, they will tell you exactly what it means of a government. Ambassadors is a weird word to use at this particular stage of the struggle. Where is your letter of exequato? Or where is your letter of credence? Which host government has accepted your letter to host you as an ambassador? Or is it some kind of an NGO ambassador or whatever? Let us put things straight and give the international community the respect they deserve for designing these Westphalia treaties. Let us give the international community a reputable name for looking at us as people who know exactly what they are doing and what they are going for. All revolutions in the world, all I know, all liberation movements in the world never had any form of governance. We can coordinate ourselves. That is not governance. We can coordinate ourselves, coordinate the groups, coordinate the rebel groups. That is not any form of governance. That is coordination. That is strategic coordination. We can coordinate ourselves in liberating ourselves. Then we hand over ourselves to any form or we surrender ourselves to any form of government. That is exactly what I think 
our activists should be preaching at this stage of the struggle. That is exactly what I think should be the way forward. Appointments would never, ever stop La Republic from killing our people. We don't need appointments. We need just two leaders, no appointments, just two. We need just two. Let these two heads sit together. We don't need appointments. If we can have just two, keep away all the appointments and communications, just two. That is, a, that is enough to liberate our people. That is all, that's all we need. And these two people are very accessible. Everyone can talk to them. They are always online. Everyone knows where they live. One lives in Maryland, the other one lives in Oslo, in Norway. So they are always accessible. It's not as if they are hidden. It's not as if they are hiding something. We all know them. So let us give them a chance. I strongly believe if we design this particular framework, we can do much within the shortest period of time. I also strongly believe with the apologies or with the U-turn of Mark Barretta and looking towards this particular direction we've always been preaching and praying about, we can have one channel towards looking at a vision without being distracted by politics from left to right. And that is what has killed the struggle. And that is what has made our leaders to be in jail at the moment, the 11 leaders. And that is what has made people to be running vilification, hate campaigns and the rest against others. Just give these two people a chance. Two liberation fighters, just two. If anyone thinks you can lead a rebel movement, join into the frame. Give these two a chance. They have the experience, they have the skill sets, and they need the tools. They are the carpenters who need that particular tool or the tools. As simple as it is, thank you very much, fellow Ambalanders. I intended to be very brief today because I wanted this video to be sectioned and put into WhatsApp. I believe that this will be the way forward for the revolution, and I believe that everyone can contribute and participate towards liberating our people first. Then we can jointly collaborate in governing ourselves through some kind of a free, fair, and transparent election for whatever leader we choose. I appreciate all of you who are watching right now, and please stay blessed and stay blessed. After this, the video will be sectioned. I think it's 20 minutes, and it will be put on WhatsApp. Bye-bye.